it's pretty early so let's uh, wake ourselves up let's do a beginner's guide to baby metal I have been binging the hell out of baby metal for probably the last week now can't get enough uh, yeah so we're gonna do a beginner's guide to baby metal I need to learn and then there's actually a, an extended version of this which we're probably gonna do at another time but for right now I feel it necessary to get like a quick quick once over so we learn a little bit of history of baby metal and yeah then we can listen to more welcome to a beginner's guide to baby metal there are longer more in-depth versions of this video linked in the description if that is something you're interested in so what is baby metal baby metal is a japanese kawaii metal band which is a sub-genre of metal they invented the original three members include Sue Metal, Yui Metal, and Moa Metal. They are backed by a group of musicians known as the Kami Band for live shows. They were formed. Yeah, so the Kami Band, that's another thing we're going to watch. Uh, there's a, a whole backstory on the Kami Band as well. So Sue Metal, which is our main vocalist, Moa Metal, I believe, is on the right in this picture, and then Yui Metal on the left. I don't know very much. I love this. I love their aesthetic here with the Kami Band. I think that's awesome. Formed in 2010 and have released three studio albums thus far. Let's discuss how they got started. Baby Metal started as a subgroup of Sakura Gakuin, which is an idol group consisting of girls aged 10 to 15, based around a school theme. The Heavy Music Club was formed by their producer, Ki Kobayashi, also known as Koba Metal, and began releasing music under the name Baby Metal. Okay, so they were an all-girl idol group ages 10 to 15, all three members and the producer Koba Metal were involved with Sakura Gakuin, and Baby Metal started as a subunit of Sakura Gakuin in the Heavy Music Club. Still did other Sak Sakura Gakuin stuff after Baby Metal started. Baby Metal split from Sakura in 2013. Oh, okay. So this on the right was the entire group, and then... Baby Metal was a sub... Okay, so like NCT 127, NCT... NCT. <laughs> there's like a SM. There's a bunch of different variations of that in, you know, K-pop. There's like a uh, whole bunch of different subgenres and Like Seventeen, for example. Seventeen is what? <clears throat> there's a lot of people. <laughs> Their first song, Doki Doki Morning was released as a part of Sakura Gakuin's first album. They eventually split off from S- I haven't heard that song yet. The only, the beginning of Baby Metal that I heard was Gimme Chocolate. And then I've been kind of listening to, basically, Gimme Chocolate and then everything that we've listened to on here is all I've actually heard. I've been actually kind of good about it, but not for very much longer. Gotta listen to more Baby Metal. SG in 2013 due to their popularity. Now, let's go meet the members of Baby Metal. Hi, I'm Baby Metal. I'm Sue Metal, Yu Metal, and Moa Metal. I'm Sue 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 Metal. First, we have Sue Metal, full name Suzuka Nakamoto, who was born on December 20, 1990. Let's go back. I know you're going to give me a very good. First, we have Okay. Suzuka Nakamoto, December 20th, 1997, Hiroshima, Japan. Performing since she was 6 years old, chosen by Kobe Metal to be the lead vocalist at a young age because of her surprisingly powerful vocals and unique stage presence. Okay. There are four Sue Metal solo songs in Baby Metal's first two albums, which are Akatsuki, Rondo of Nightmare, Amore, and No Rain, No Rainbow. Okay, we're going to have to check those out. Sue Metal usually takes on lead speaking role in media appearances and is always very composed and professional. Intense death glare. She does have that intense death glare, that's for sure. Very sweet, humble off stage, despite her commanding presence on stage. All right, cool. I wanted to run through that because I didn't think that that was very fair <laughs> for it to be a quick once over. So I wanted to make sure that that information was prominent. Have Sue Metal, full name Suzuka Nakamoto, who was born on December 20, 1997, in Hiroshima, Japan. 
Sue has been performing in some way since she was as young as six years old, appearing in all sorts of things, before she was eventually placed in Sakura Gakuin, being the lead vocalist of the Heavy Music Club. She was chosen for the lead role at such a young age due to her surprisingly strong vocals and unique stage presence. Wow. In Baby Metal's first two albums, Sue Metal has four solo songs, Akatsuki, Rondo of Nightmare, Amore, and No Rain No Rainbow. Sue usually takes the leadership role for Baby Metal in most situations, she will do the bulk of the talking in most of their media appearances. キュートとメタルを融合した新しいジャンルベビーメタルというジャンルを作るべく活動しています。なので、衣装だったりとか音楽も可愛い要素とかっこいい要素がたくさん詰まった。また新しいジャンルを作っています。We she is known to have a very strong, <laughs> commanding presence on stage, and a lethal death glare. That's such a cool shot. Holy crap, let's see that again. Oh, man. That is so cool. That is so cool. Wow. That's a lot of people. While she may be a force on stage, Sue is a very sweet, dorky girl when not in full metal mode. Next, we have Yui Metal, full name Yui Mizuno, born on June 20, 1999 in Kanagawa City, Japan. Yui started taking dance classes at a very young age and eventually was signed by a muse and became a part of Sakura Gakuin, where she was a member of a few clubs, most notably the Heavy Music Club. She is considered by most to be the best dancer in baby metal. Yui no tsumi wa dance desu. This has earned her the nickname Yui Bot because of her very precise dancing, as well as her lag which refers to her tendency to drift off in interviews and react slowly to her surroundings. <laughs> this way? Yeah. There it is, the fox sign. あの人がいたりとか、本当にお年寄りの方から子供の方まで、そして男性女性、アイドルファン、メタルファン、全然関係なく、いろんなジャンルが好きな方がいて、そんなことも気づかないぐらい彼がこう、そんなことも気づかない
Like the others, Moa was also performing at a young age and was eventually placed in Sakura Gakuin, where, like Yui, she was a member of a few clubs, most notably the Heavy Music Club. Moa's most notable physical trait would be her dimples, so if you're still... I do think that's an interesting idol concept. Of all the idol concepts that I think that we've seen at this point, I think Baby Metal is probably the most unique because I don't think that they were a group called Baby Metal like they've been explaining. I think that the fact that they're trying to create the genre of Baby Metal where it's like the combination of cute, cool, and heavy elements, which, to be honest, is the metal community. <laughs> the metal community, as I know it, is uh, very cute and very cool and very creative. And it's just cool to see... Uh, a completely different culture and body all those same elements but in their own unique way very cool all trying to learn which member is which if you're looking for moa look for the dimples you can't miss them <laughs> <laughs> moa loves food and she will make sure you know it too what are you looking forward to on this tour of america <laughs> she is known to be a very emotional person who wears her heart on her sleeve. She cries a lot, but always spreads love and positivity to those around her. <laughs> I love everyone and uh, I hope we can continue to get love and support. Moa can play the guitar a little bit, but has admitted herself that she doesn't practice it nearly as much as she probably should. She loves to have fun on stage as well and can be seen participating in all sorts of shenanigans during their live shows. Moa has also done a few special solo performances on birthday-related shows, such as performing Love Machine at the Legend 1999 show, playing the acoustic guitar part for Shine at the Legend M show, and taking over the lead vocal role for Headbanger on several occasions. We also have the subunit of baby metal, known as black baby metal, which is when Yui Metal and Moa Metal perform songs as a duo without Sue Metal. Just as Sue had her solo songs, there are four black baby metal songs, okay. Anadari Daisoksen, For No Yuta, GJ, and Sis Anger. Yui and Moa actually wrote For No Yuta themselves, while on the tour bus between shows. Now I let's discuss that. the musicians behind the girls. A quick side note, but whenever you see the guys dressed in skeleton costumes, that is not a real band. They are known as Baby Bones and were there to pretend to play the instruments while the music was played on a backing track because Baby Metal couldn't always afford to have a live band early on. Wow! That is probably one of the most interesting things I've ever heard. I don't think I've ever heard, I've heard of lip syncing. Yeah. That is different. That is different. Baby bones. Okay. Okay. That's a hell of an idea. Wow. Wow. Well, I love that they have the Kami band, and I don't think that they're going to have any problem affording the Kami band anymore. Now, onto the real band, the Kami band. The Kami band is a session band that consists of various members that rotate in and out, often seen Holy in crap. white robes and corpse paint, depicting Japanese spirits. There have been a lot of different people who have played in the Kami band over the years, one of which was Mikio Fujioka, who sadly passed away in January 2018 at the age of 36 due to injuries suffered from an accident while stargazing. In recent uh. years, we've also seen the addition of the Western Kami band who tours with Baby Metal overseas. The addition of the Western Kami band has resulted in a change of costume for the Kamis, as they now wear darker robes and masks. 
It should also be noted, but it isn't necessarily the Kami band members playing in the studio recordings of baby metal songs, as they aren't technically considered a part of baby metal. Now let's have a very brief discussion about some of the lore surround- Another very interesting- wow. Wow. I mean, wow. I say wow like I'm fucking- what's the dude's name? Uh, wow baby metal. First, we have the fox god, which you'll hear them refer to quite often. You will see foxes in some way, shape, and form in basically everything baby metal does. They have had some very elaborate sets based around fox imagery as well. Next, we have That's the fox so sign, cool. which is the hand sign they make instead of doing the traditional devil horns hand gesture used by most metal bands. Anytime there is a question in an interview the girls can't or don't want to answer, they will simply respond with Only the fox got now! Only the Fox got now! Fun leader, Fox got now! <laughs> there is Only also the, the legendary corset, which refers to the neck brace depicted in the Headbanger music video. You'll see the neck brace referred to quite often in their live shows. Baby metal fans are referred to as The One, and the song titled The One is a tribute to their fans. There is a lot of lore based around the light and dark, the Chosen Seven, the Metal Galaxy, and all sorts of other stuff that won't be discussed here in this video as it's a lot to take in, but isn't really that important. Now let's briefly discuss oh, how fair, Baby Metal fair. went from a small subunit of Sakura Gakuin to a worldwide sensation. After the release of their first self-titled album in 2014, the music video for their hit song Gimme Chocolate went viral, bringing a lot of new eyes to the group. This eventually led to their first world tour, where they played their first big show outside of Japan at Sonosphere, which is what legitimized baby metal on a global stage in many fans' eyes. In 2016, they released their second album, titled Metal Resistance, as well as a second world tour which kicked off in Wembley Arena in London, and finished off with back-to-back wow. -back sold out shows of 55,000 fans in the Tokyo Dome. They also went on to perform That's or tour insane. with several big That's artists over the years, of people such as Metallica, Korn, Guns N' Roses, Lady Gaga, and several others. Huge. Now we move on to what is the most difficult period in the band's history. Before the Legend S Baptism XX show in December 2017, which was to honor Sue's 20th birthday, it was announced that Yui Metal was advised by her doctor to not perform at this show due to an undisclosed health issue. They considered cancelling the show, but went ahead as just a duo of Sue Metal and Moa Metal for the first time. Legend S would also be Mikio's last performance with Baby Metal before his untimely passing. Baby Metal was about to embark on their 2018 world tour, and no further announcements were made about Yui, so most fans assumed she would be back, but this would not be the case. Ah. And what shocked many people, they kicked off their world tour in Kansas City, but everything was different. Sue Metal and Moa Metal were now positioned in the center, with two backup dancers off to the sides, who were nicknamed Muscle Metal by fans. <laughs> Moa Metal was also now singing all of Yui's lines in addition to her own. The traditional red and black outfits were also replaced in favor of a darker, more mature look. On October 19, 2018, Amuse put out a statement that said Yui Metal came to a decision that she will not be performing in the 2018 World Tour and that she will no longer be a part of Baby Metal, then thank Yui for everything. Yui also put out a public statement apologizing for her decision and thanking everyone for the last eight years, as well as stating, quote, I will do my utmost best to be able to again one day, meet you all as Mizuno Yui. This was the last time anyone has heard from Yui publicly, but Moa and Sue have said in interviews ah. that they still talk to Yui Welcome and that man. she is thank doing you. well. 
On the same day Yui's departure was announced, Baby Metal released a single titled Starlight, which many fans believe to be a tribute song for Mikio and maybe Yui as well, as they are both noted stargazers. Baby Metal continued on as just Sue, Moa, and the backup dancers for the rest of 2018. In 2019, they announced they will be releasing their third album, titled Metal Galaxy. Then two big shows were announced, the first of which gave us the big announcement about the newest addition to Baby Metal, The Avengers. Wait, no, not that. It was announced that three dancers, known as The Avengers, would be rotating in and out of UE Metal's old spot. And to support Sue Metal and More Metal, three brave Avengers were sung by the Fox God. The Avengers do not sing or have a mic, they just dance. They aren't technically considered part of Baby Metal, as only Sue and Moa are marketed and promoted as Baby Metal. It was never even announced who the three girls were, but fans of the shows were able to recognize them. First, we had Riho Sayashi, who was born on May 28, 1998, and is a former ace of the popular J-pop group Morning Musume. Next, we got Kano Fujihira, who was born on August 28, 2004, and is a former member of Sakura Gakuin, and is currently in the new Amuse unit at 1-5. And finally we have Momoko Okazaki, born on March 3, 2003, who is also a former member of Sakura Gakuin, and once said she had dreamed of traveling the world as a backup dancer for a big artist when she was older, which she... Well, I mean, that's pretty much what she's doing at this point. Uh, I think it's awesome that they're actually getting groups, or excuse me, uh, girls from their original main group, so that there's not like, uh, I'm sure that they all know each other and have a relationship, so that's really cool. He now gets Again, to do. Uh, sorry, another interesting concept that they, Yui's out, and they continue as a duo, but they add, so to keep the you know, live element alive, with, with especially with, like, dancing and syncopation, you need a little bit more than just two for it to kind of hit, you know what I mean? So, yeah, very cool. Interesting. Very interesting. Due to other commitments, it is unknown if Riho and Kano will continue on as a dancer for Baby Metal. Momoko has been the Avenger for the last 20-plus shows, and it currently looks as if she may be the only one in that spot for now, but only the Fox God knows. Only the Fox God knows. <laughs> <laughs> now we move on to some of the most recent news. Sue and Moa appeared in Corey Taylor's CMFT Must Be Stopped music video. Baby Metal featured as a guest artist on Bring Me the Horizon's EP post-human survival horror on the song Kingslayer. Baby Metal's relationship with Bring Me The Horizon goes back years, as they have supported each other for a while, and Bring Me The Horizon toured with Baby Metal in Japan. As it drew near, I Baby Metal that. revealed that they are celebrating their 10th anniversary with the release of a greatest hits album entitled 10 Baby Metal Years on December 23, 2020. Uh, we appreciate everyone for supporting Baby Metal. We are very excited for our 10th year. And please check out our best album and online events coming up soon. In December 2020, it was announced that Baby Metal will play 10 shows at Tokyo's famous Budokan venue in 2021 as part of their 10th anniversary celebration. Due to the pandemic, various policies will be in place to ensure the safety of all the attendees. At the time of this video recording, oh. Half of the Budokan. That was Sabaton right there. I forgot that they went on a world tour with Sabaton. Love Sabaton. If you haven't heard of Sabaton, power metal, love Sabaton. Another like globally popular group. I think that that's what we're, I think that that's what Baby Metal was experiencing, global popularity. Shows have happened, with the rest coming up soon. And with that we are up to date on the latest news on Baby Metal. Hopefully this video was entertaining and informative. Thank you for watching. Thank you. I learned a lot about baby metal there. That kind of gives me some more context.